we have seen the three functional groups. The alcohol group, which is identified by the OH group in the organic compound. And when we have this group, the suffix given is all, OL. Similarly, when we have the aldehyde group, that is identified by the presence of a CHO group, we give the suffix AL, that is AL. Similarly, when we have a carboxylic acid, which is identified by a COOH group, we give the suffix oic acid, that is OIC acid. The rules remain the same, that is, we give the lowest number to the substituent or the functional group, and the functional group should always be included in the longest carbon chain. Let's take an example. We are given this organic compound. Let's try to find its IUPAC name. The first step remains the same. That is, we have to find the longest carbon chain. So let's see. In this case, this is the longest carbon chain. The functional group should be included in the longest carbon chain. Now, we have to number it. We start the numbering such that the functional group gets the lowest number. So we start the numbering from the right hand side. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. The presence of 4 carbon atoms means we have but. Since there is an OH group, that means it is an alcohol. So we give the suffix all. So we get butanol. Since the OH group is present at the position 1, we can also write it as butane 1 all. So this is the name given to this organic compound. In this, we, we know that the name of butane is an E. So this E in the end is removed and is replaced by an OL. So we give the suffix OL when there is an alcohol group that is identified by the presence of an OH group. So for any organic compound, while giving the IUPAC name, we first have the prefix, which is used for the substituents in the organic compound. Then we have the word root, which is given by the number of carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. And then we have the suffix. In this case, we had an alcohol group, so we use the suffix OL. Let's take another example. So we are given this organic compound. The first step remains the same. That is, we have to find the longest carbon chain. So in this case, this is our longest carbon chain and we include the functional group in the longest carbon chain. Now we have to start the numbering. If we start the numbering from the left hand side, we get 1, 2, 3. In that case, the functional group gets the number 3. If we start the numbering from the right hand side, we get 1, 2, 3. So the functional group gets the number 1. Since we have to give the lowest number to the functional group, which gets a higher priority than the substituent, we start the numbering from the right hand side. Now, we have 1, 2, 3. We have one substituent CH3 at position 2. So the prefix becomes 2 methyl. And now we have to give the word root. The word root comes from the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain. We see three carbon atoms. Three carbon atoms means prop. So the prefix is 2-methyl. Then we have the word root, which is prop. And since we have an alcohol group at position 1, so this becomes propane 1-all. The E of propane is removed and we give the suffix OL, that is all. So this is the name of this organic compound. We first have the prefix for the substituent present. Then we have the word root which comes from the number of carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. And then we have the suffix. This comes from the organic compound and the functional group present in the organic compound. Let's take another example. This is the given organic compound. The first step is to find the longest carbon chain containing the functional group. So in this case, this is our longest carbon chain. Now again, we can start the numbering from left or from right. So we can either start from 1, 2, 3, 4. In that case, the functional group gets the number 1. If we start the numbering from left, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. The functional group gets the number 4. 
we always give the lowest number to the functional group. So this is right and this is wrong. So we start the numbering from the right hand side. That is giving one number to the functional group which is alcohol group. So now we see two substituents present. We have chloro and methyl. So the rule that we always arrange the substituents in alphabetical order also applies. So we have two substituents chloro and methyl. So C comes before M. So we first place chloro which is at position 2. So we get 2 chloro and then the methyl group which is at position 3. So this is the prefix of this organic compound. Now we have to give the word root which comes from the number of carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. We see 4 carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. So 4 carbon atoms means it is but. And since an OH group is present in the organic compound at position 1, so this becomes butane 1 all. So this is the prefix given to the substituents. This is the word root and followed by the suffix. Let's look at another example. This is the given organic compound. The first step is to find the longest carbon chain containing the functional group. In this case, our functional group is CHO. That is the aldehyde group. So this is the longest carbon chain. Now we have to start the numbering such that the functional group gets the lowest number. So if we start the numbering from left, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. So the functional group gets number 4. If we start the numbering from right, 1, 2, 3, 4, the functional group gets the lowest number. So we start the numbering from right. In this case, keep in mind the group, that is the CHO group, which is the functional group, contains a carbon atom. Since we give the numbers to the carbon atoms, so the C of the CHO group also gets a number. So in this case, we start the numbering from left. We have four carbon atoms. Four means but. And since there is an aldehyde group present, we use the suffix al, that is al. So it becomes butanol. So again, butane is e at the end. So we remove the e and we replace it by al. Since the functional group is present at position 1, so we write butane 1 al. So in this case, when we have the aldehyde group, the C of the aldehyde group also gets a number and we give the lowest possible number to the functional group. Let's take another example. This is the given organic compound. The first step, find the longest carbon chain containing the functional groups. In this case, we have two functional groups. So the longest carbon chain in this becomes this. Now we can number it in two ways. We can start the numbering from left or from top or from the bottom. In both the cases you see that the functional group gets the number 1 and 5. So even in this case the functional group gets the number 1 and 5. So both are right. We can use either one of the numbering. It's, it's the same way. So let's take this one. Now we see there are 5 carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. So 5 carbon atoms means it is pent. So we get pent. Now in this case we have two functional groups at position 1 and position 5. So we get 1, 5, diol. So as we had used in substituents, we use di, tri or tetra for the number of substitu substituents present. Similarly in this case we have two functional groups. So we use the prefix di. In this case, also observe one more thing. We do not ignore the E of pentane. In case we had only one functional group, say we had only one CHO group, we write it as pentanol. So we ignore the E of pentane. But in this case, we have the entire name. This is one complete name followed by the suffix because we have two functional groups. So we do not ignore the E of pentane. We write pentane 
followed by the positions of the two functional groups. Since we have two functional groups, we use the prefix di and then the suffix al. Since the two functional groups present are aldehyde groups. Let's take another example. This is our given organic compound. In this case, the functional group present is a carboxylic acid. And observe that the functional group contains a carbon atom itself. So first of all, we find the longest carbon chain containing the functional group. So this is our longest carbon chain. Now we start the numbering such that the functional group gets the lowest number. So if we number from the right, the functional group gets the lowest number. There are four carbon atoms, so it becomes but, becomes butanoic acid. Since a carboxylic acid is present in the organic compound, we use the suffix oic acid. And in this, in this also, we have removed the E of butane. The E is replaced by the oic acid. And since the functional group is present at position 1, we can also write it as butane 1 oic acid. So whenever we have a carboxylic acid, the C of the carboxylic acid also gets a number. And we give the lowest possible number to the functional group. Let's take another example. In this case, we have a functional group in the organic compound. So first step remains the same. Find the longest carbon chain containing the functional group. So this is the longest carbon chain. Now where should we start the numbering from? Since our functional group is present at the right, so we start the numbering from the right hand side. So this is how we number it. We see one substituent present at position 4. So the prefix for this organic compound becomes 4-methyl. Now this is the prefix. To find the word root, we see the number of carbon atoms present in the longest chain. There are 5 carbon atoms present in the longest carbon chain. 5 means pent. So we have pent and we see one functional group that is the carboxylic acid group present at position number 1. So it becomes pentane 1 oic acid. So for this organic compound, we have one substituent. So this is the prefix. The second part is the word root, which comes from the number of carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. There are five carbon atoms, so we get pent. And based upon the functional group present, we give the suffix. So this is the IUPAC name of this organic compound. So for giving the IUPAC names to the organic compounds, we follow certain rules. The first rule is we give the lowest number to the substituent or the functional group. The functional group should always be included in the longest carbon chain. And the IUPAC name consists of three parts. The substituents give the prefix. Then we get the word root from the number of carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. And based on the functional group present in the compound, we get the suffix.